2017. This is CISB 113, Section 6, Information Technology, Fundamentals and Practices. Today is week number 9 in the week number 10. It's day number 9 in the week number 5. All right, so the actual is week number six, I think so. Uh, yes, week number five, day number day number ten. Right, I'm right. Uh, today is first day. So uh, I know you're very excited um, because I pop up this particular screen, and many of you have been following this very closely. So on Monday, I informed you that a submission link for your first assignment has been set up and it's ready to receive the submission starting from this Saturday. This means September 23rd and the submission link will be opened until the end of Sunday. That means September 24th, 1155. So on Monday, you know that the submission link is ready and you're going to submit your first assignment individually, okay? Individually, okay? Uh, by yourself through the submission link, which is this link here. You click on this link by this Saturday, you will have an upload button ready after you browse through the computer to select the file which represents your first online learning journal. You can say upload and the file will be selected and uploaded to the Moodle web garden. So on Monday, I also introduced to you a journal template and I told you you need to follow this template to complete your journal assignment. In other words, we need to go back to the template, okay? And then we have to open it once again, and to let you see that this is the template, you need to use to document your first journal. So including this cover page, okay, you need to fill up the cover page, change this student ID into your own student ID, change this student name into your own full name, and then you need to make sure if you belong to section 006, you need to delete section 007, and if you belong to section 007, you need to delete section 006. And after that, you have to include here the title of your journal topic. Okay, you must include here the title of your journal topic. If your journal topic is, I've just given you an example, what is ethics in the information age? If this is your title, okay, page, the example I gave you, you need to put that title here, okay? Make sure you put that title here. And after that, you move on to the second page. Okay, the second page begins with asking you what is your chosen topic. Then you put the topic again there, for example, what is ethics in the information age? Okay? You might want to characterize your topic with a little bit of the information. For example, you select your topic from Big Topic 1, or Big Topic 2, or Big Topic 3, or Big Topic 4. If you happen to forget what is meant by Big Topic, then you need to come back here, okay? And go to the day number 1, and click on the calendar, okay? If you click on the calendar, you still record that on Monday. I helped you to record that on learning contract number one, big topic. Number one is introductions to information technology. And big topic number two is the internet, the web, and electronic commerce. Big topic number three is privacy, security, and ethics. And big topic number four is information technology and you. So you now know what these four topics are all about, okay? So we come back here, okay? And come back here, this is the example we are following. And so you need to provide the essential questions you have created based on the choice of your big topic. For example, the choice of the big topic is ethics in the information age. Then, the essential question you want to include there 
just like this journal is already provided, it's called what is ethics in the information age? Okay, that is the essential questions. And then what resource item under the questions have you chosen to elaborate on? In other words, what are those sources of material? Or what are those material you have used to come up with the information that is supposed to be attached in your journal? So if you look at the examples here, everybody should have a, at least a couple of copies here on the table, you will discover that on the first page, they have resource one, resource two. And on the second page, they have resource three, okay? And on this second piece of paper, they also have resource one, okay? For interpretation. Things like this are the resource item you need to come up with on your own, for your own topic, all right? Now, these particular journal example, the paper copy that I put on your table, is just one example uh, which is done by the student in the previous classes, but not in exactly in this class, because this is the first time this class is being offered, but in a similar class, okay? So, you have to make sure you have those resource items ready, and you have to include these resource items in the journals of the work. And then, we move on to observation. For example, under resource number one, you might find quite a number of very interesting materials that you want to include in your journal, so you have to include them under the observation sections of your journal. And my way of helping you to keep track of them is to make sure you know that you have to count the number of different pieces you have together from an individual resource. So if there is only one piece you discover from a specific resource, you can only you can just say zero one. If there are 10 pieces, you can say it's finding 0, 1, finding 0, 2, finding 0, 3, and so forth from a specific resource. And so when you move on to the other resource, you can similarly extract and discover information which will be of value to you as far as your topic is concerned. So you list out all those very interesting findings which are of interest to you to support the writing of the journal. So this is an area where you keep track of the notes of importance you can extract from the resource. And you also provide the citations alongside the notes you provided here using the lessons you learned last week on APA intact citations, okay? And once you provide intact citations here, you will have to provide a full reference citations at the end, okay? That is called reference citations. So that is very important. You must inform the reader from your journal's work what are the sources you're using and from which source you have discovered what. And when you say you have discovered something without providing the citations, you will be considered as cheating. You are not giving credit to your source. So it's very important that whatever findings you provided here, you must provide the intact citations to go with your finding. This is an exercise of looking up information and giving credit to the sources of your information. So observations require each one of you to provide your discovery with the intact citations, and all of these references must be fully listed out in the reference sections. So if you go down this particular list, you will discover that I have a reference sections here. All together, for a particular journal, five references should be good enough because you do not have that much time to look beyond five. But if you are very enthusiastic, very hardworking, and you would like to list out 10 or 20 you're welcome, but you have to, you have to account for that. If you list a reference there, 
you must have the in-text citations for that reference to prove that you have read through it and you cite those informations from those proper records. Okay, so that is the observations. So after the observations, it will be the time for you to ask questions. Suppose you have listed out 10 important discoveries here with all the necessary citations. Now, it's really up to you to ask as many questions as you want based upon the 10 observations. And so you come down here to something called your first interpretations. For each interpretations, it could include from one to several questions. But you must, you must tell from which observations are you making those interpretations. From which of these observations are you making this interpretations with the subsequent questions? So you are actually interconnecting things together. You have produced um, observations after you're looking um, into the resources you identify. And then you produce the interpretations in the forms of different questions for each or several of your observations. So preferably, you give each of the observations here a code number, starting from 0, 01, 0, 02, 0, 03. If it's observations 1, maybe it's observation 1, underscore 0, 01, we're presenting is an observation from a specific source. Now, you have to be creative in order to give a reference code for each of the observations. And you have to be creative and very much organized in order to tell from what observations you come up with the interpretations. Normally, this does not require us to write complete post-style English. We just need to be very much organized, systematic, connected. So grammatically correct English is not an issue here, but a framework with organizations which could link things together to point to what this interpretation is all about. So suppose for finding 01, I create interpretation 01, and I create three sub-questions in this interpretation 1 based on looking into finding 01. You have to be very organized, okay? Some of the time, people become a little bit loose and they just provide a number of interpretations here based on all the observations above. Now that is, I cannot say that is not right, but that is not systematic enough, all right? Because normally we want to make sure the system will tell us specific things from a specific source, coming up with what kind of questions for that. And because of that, when you come to the applications, you have different lessons perceived by looking into different interpretations. Sometimes people will just laugh to say, well, I think I learned this based on looking into all these interpretations. I cannot say that it's not right, but I think it's not as systematic as what we expect. So, so this is basically a template allowing you a very simple structure to put in your discovery after spending time to look into the topic of the choice, to look into the related resources that is concerned with the topic of the choice. And so those references must be done in an APA style. And then I also provide another useful section for you if you discover any useful web link which leads you into discovering a lot of other informations, so it's time for you to put it here, list those links here, and put a very soft annotations. So you know that this is the template which will give you the structure, the framework to present your journal. And the front page is definitely important, and the two pages following include your work for this first general topic. 
And then today, when you look into your table, you discover that I've given you a student example of his or her journal, again, is the first journal, done in the similar courses, okay, in the, in the past one or two semester. So I include the journal here for your reference, all right? But before that, I want you to know that the OIA contacts is very important. The OIA contacts, oh, let me just go back first. Yeah, let's go back first, and then I click on open in a new window. That's much better. Okay, this is an important guideline for you to write your journal. When we talk about observations, basically it's a step-by-step -step approach. You need to read through the whole IA instructions before you extract information from it. When we talk about observations, it refers to the step to discover informational materials on the topic you selected, such as reading an article, okay, you're reading a journal example, watching a video clip from YouTube, or listening to a speech, long lane you attend a lot of seminar speech at the university. So you got some information. Some information is brought to you. You grab some of these. So you just grab it. And then in the interpretation step, this is a step responsible for analyzing the information discovered from your topic selected. What is meant by analyzing? Analyzing the information means to look at the information from different angles, try to perceive it to see if you can extract information from different perspective. So if this is a remote control, I can look at it from the bottom, I can look at it from the top, and I can have different observations of it. And I can look at it on the side. Okay? So you can have different discovery by looking into the information material you discover from the sources and extract different sorts of information which can help you to understand the topic more. So it requires your discovery of further information. There's not just one single source in that case. Normally it involves at least three other sources. So that from the three other sources you could extract different perspective of the information other than the one topic. So when you put them together again, you should have a pretty good picture to look at things a little bit different from the first time you look at it. So by doing that, here comes a very important term. You come up with the issues of the topic. The issues of the topic is a little bit different from the questions you have. The issues being some important things of concerns to a large number of people, not just you. Okay? So you have to, after looking into the information here, come up with the issues. These are set of questions so that you can understand how to present the findings of the topic in a way that makes sense to not just you but a larger community. So, such issues become your essential questions to ask in your situations of concern. You have to tell, globally, the, the reasons why you choose a particular topic. When you choose a, one topic rather than the other topic, people will ask you, why did you choose this topic instead of the other topic? And you have to tell the reasons, okay? The reasons. And then when you tell the reasons, you will just nail down the issues for them. Because this topic involves quite a number of issues of concerns to many others. So you select the topic. And finally, you just have to demonstrate people up to your analysis of those issues based on the information discovered for the topic. What are the lessons learned for others? What can you tell others about the importance of this topic, and then basically you meet others into understanding the essential things. You bring others along into your inquiry process. So it's very important that you perceive this as the important conclusions of your effort. 
so that people, not only you can benefit from your explorations of the topic, from your trying to answer those issues in such a way that people understand they have to say thank you to you. Well, I'll give you an example from um, August of 23rd when we experienced Hurricane Hato. What can we learn from such an instance in Macau? Well, there are many issues here. All right. So the issues related to information technology, as people ask, why our government failed to inform all of us living in Macau that the water level, because of the hurricane's impact, will rise, rise several meters above the normal level. So people living on coastal area must be warned that these presents dangers, particularly in the underground parking space. Why didn't we issue such a warning? Okay? So having said that, now it's time we to work together to look at the general example. Now, a couple minutes ago, before we start today's class, some student asked me, what do we need to do? Do we need to follow this format which is given or demonstrated in the examples you gave us? Or do we have to go back to the template that you gave us earlier? Well, actually, this student before, he or she wrote this journal, is also given a template. That template I gave you, okay? And I just give them some freedom to write the observations, actual observations, in such a way that he or she feels most comfortable. And she produced this journal for, for me to give him or her a grade. And I, the first feedback I told her is, Fine, you're a very organized person, but can you tell me how many observations have you made based on this big topic? And then she, she or he scratches her head or his head and then pause and cut. And they say, well, it, it takes us so long to give me an answer which sounds so simple. Why not just list them out as one, two, three, four, five? So people can look at it at a glance, how many observations have you made from the particular topic, from how many sources. And I told her that based on the, the reading of this journal, we can understand that the number of sources here, the number of sources here is at a glance. You can see resource one, resource two on the first page, two. And then we can see, oh, one more resource on page three. In other words, she used three important resources to explore the topic, what is ethics in the information age. But out of these three resources, if we have to answer the questions, how many observations from the first resource, how many observations from the second resource, and how many observations from the third resource, we do not know because the student did not give us this specific information. So from that angle, it's a good piece of, it's, it's a piece of good journal, okay, based on the template that you can discuss among yourself. And then when I look into the interpretations, I could see that there are basically three questions. Underlay the big questions, which are specified as A, B, and C, okay? and the specific questions. And then there is, it looks like there is a specific answer to the questions. Now, in the secondary school, we're very fond of getting the answers to questions. But in the context of this exercise, the answers themselves may not be of as much importance as a set of refined questions. So now, we can understand from reading the interpretations the three sub-questions underlift the big questions. And then for each of the sub-questions, there is a paragraph, a paragraph of information. But there is something missing here. That something is, if you look back to the observations, there are no in-text citations. We actually do not know where 
do those ideas come from? Because there are no in-text citation. So if there is no in-text citations to go with the observations, what's going to become of the journal? The student is not giving credit to the sources properly. Okay. Then do you understand what you need to do to write your journal? So, and then we come to the applications. In the applications, look, it's just one single paragraph. It does not tell what applications or what lessons is supposed to be learned from what interpretations based on what observations. In other words, the student did not link up the lessons learned to a specific situations of concern. So from that angle onward, what do you think of the journal? So may I remind you one more time, in writing your journal, English grammar is not an issue. Your English grammar can be very poor as long as your spelling is correct. But your organizations of the idea to link the idea from the observations to the interpretations to the applications must be done very carefully so that people can understand what you are talking about in regard to what issues, based on what findings. That is very important. You have a topic, you have some sources for the topic, you look into the sources of the topic, you discover something, based on your discovery, you ask some questions, and based on thinking about the questions and perceiving the answer to those questions, you produce some lessons learned. So what level, whatever lessons learned you're going to produce or present, they must be linked back to your interpretations and linked back to your observations. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? Now, may I give you some time to work on this? I will give you 10 minutes to 15 minutes time now to look into this journal per persons, per table. I would say that five minutes individual persons looking into the journal, example, and then another five minutes you discuss the journal finding with your learning partner. And after you have finished discussing your findings with your learning partner, I would like your table to have an overall discussion as a whole. So you need to be sitting next to your learning partner so that you spend time reading this journal and then your partner will spend time reading the same journal. And after five minutes, the two of you in your learning pair discuss about this journal, what you can do to improve the journal. And at the end of that, the peers in your table need to exchange your views about that. This is a very important exercise before you submit your personal journal by this weekend, okay? So we are willing to spend this whole hour to do that because it's very important that you know what makes a good journal and in what, in what format, okay, and why you are doing this. So go ahead, read the journal on your own first and then discuss the journal with your learning partner and then after that, discuss the journal with your learning peers in your table. All right. And of course, if your question, you just raise your hand. I will be at your table. This is just an example, okay? This may not be the best example of the journal. So, you can also give this journal a grade. If 10 points here, how many points this journal can earn the grade? And based on my explanations, you need to explain why this journal deserves this grade. Okay? Talk about this, it's very important. All right.
your observations, it's done. So this is, observation means look at information. Now you move on to interpretation. One important action you need to do in interpretation is to question into your findings in observations. Questions into the findings of your observations. So if you go back to the 20 pieces of information you discover from your source, for each piece of the information, you might want to ask from one to three questions about this. And then you will have three questions per piece of the 20 pieces of information. You list them out in your interpretations. And then you need to ask some very important questions, not trivial questions. Very important questions like, what does it mean to you when you want to know something about the topic? What does each piece of the information you extracted from here means to you when you want to know something about a topic? And then you have to repeat asking the question, what does the first two pieces of information means to you if you want to know something about a topic until you become satisfied of the linked questions when you piece them together as a jigsaw puzzle, what can you see in the topic of your choice? What's the lesson you're going to learn? And so, you start answering those questions in your applications. You start answering those questions in your applications by not answering all. Sometimes you do not need to answer all because you may not have enough time and definitely you will exit two pages. You have to select some most relevant questions to answer in your applications. This will become your story to tell about the topic. You have a topic. You have some sources to learn something about a topic. You ask questions from the sources in regard to the observations you produce. You try to answer those questions. At the end of the day, you discover that not many of those questions are relevant enough. If you want to tell a story which is coherent for you to make sense of the topic. So you select some questions, you try to answer these questions in your applications, and you list them up here with all the important extra resources you are looking to. And that is going to be a piece of important learning. You select a topic, you look at information, you create questions, you sort out questions, you make decisions on what are important, you construct the responses to your questions, and then you present your learning. That is your journey. In the process of doing this, grammar, English grammar is not the most important here. Your language ability to express it, which is the minimum. That's why I give you a framework. Alright? So, the student journal here that I use as an example, tells you, no one journal is perfect. This is a student, at the end of the semester, she got an A, okay? This is her first general, journal, okay? And then, I've already given her a lot of the feedback at the end of that, and she reads that, yes, so much better if we just focus on the thinking the critical thinking part, rather than the always the English writing part. So, when I ask her the questions, how many observations have you produced out of how many sources have you identified? You just have to be quick to answer that. So each one of you should be quick to answer that. And then I'll ask the question, how many questions have you produced in your interpretations based on the observations you produce, Ernie. 
and then eventually I will ask the question, how many lessons learned have you picked up from this writing based on the many questions in your interpretations? So you have to understand that you are just like a funnel. You put a lot of information there, and in the funnel, eventually what's coming up here must be well processed. Okay? So I hope that this could help you a little bit more. Uh, it's an important part of your learning, all right? So I hope you have already good, you got a good discussions among yourself. That's why I did not get you this until today. Many students who looked at this item this morning immediately asked me, I wrote my journal according to a temporary, but you gave us this general example, it, it changed my mind. So I immediately changed my platform to the paragraph form. I said, don't do it. Hope, this is just an example. Okay? You do not need to follow exactly here, but you have to follow this example. So you have to understand that. I, I very much emphasize you understand the steps in getting your work done. Because the homework, or better say the assignment itself, you need to understand that there's a lot of things, a lot of things you need to learn. And this guideline is very important. You have to understand what you need to do in observations, in the interpretations, and applications. And this OIA steps of practical thinking is applicable to every discipline of your study in the four years of your college. Okay? So you need to have this pattern of thinking ready. Okay, having said that. Allow me to spend a couple of minutes to review what I expect the two of you in your pair should have done or should and will should have done by the end of this weekend. I invite you to, to focus on the skill of producing presentations using the PowerPoint slides. And then I invite you to learn how to produce narrations over each slide of your PowerPoint presentations. And then I invite you to record your narrations, to add voice over each slide of your PowerPoint. So eventually, your PowerPoint is voice added, and then you can convert your PowerPoint into a video so your presentations will be automatic. So allow me to show you this example. I hope you watch it already. We have a word with PowerPoint that goes over a narration for each slide. And then save your presentation as a movie that you can put on your computer or upload to YouTube or even bring into an application like Windows Movie Maker for further editing. Okay, so let's open a saved PowerPoint from our computer. We've got that right here. To begin recording this, we're first going to find the tab called Slideshow, which is in the middle. And then we're going to have an option called Record Slideshow. Clicking this will bring up another couple of options, and we're going to choose Start Recording from the Beginning Slide. Now, it says Record Slideshow on the next little window here. We're going to leave both of these checked, and when I hit Start Recording, it should send your PowerPoint into full screen mode. Okay, we are now in full screen and recording mode. The PowerPoint, as well as my voice, are currently being recorded over this slide. Before I demonstrate how to record the PowerPoint, I'd like to draw your attention to the recording toolbar in the upper left hand corner. The toolbar contains your controls for recording over each slide. If I click the right arrow, it's going to go to the next slide when I'm done recording my voice over the current slide. Pause will allow you to pause the recording to maybe gather your thoughts or cough if you need to and you can resume recording when you're done. I would also like to show you that there are two timers that you currently see counting up. The first denotes how much time has been spent recording on the current slide, while the second timer, the one with the higher number, shows how much time has been spent on the presentation altogether. Finally, there is an arrow that allows you to re-record the current slide. So if I hit the repeat arrow, it's going to pause my recording temporarily and allow me to resume recording. Let me go ahead and stop now that I've introduced you to the controls and show you how to actually record your PowerPoint. Okay, I've got my safe PowerPoint presentation here, and assuming I have a computer with a sound card, a microphone that is configured correctly, and speakers, I should be ready to record. 
So let's go ahead and record this PowerPoint presentation. Keeping in mind our ultimate goal is to export this as a movie, which can be played on a computer or shared on YouTube or bought into another application for further editing. So we're going to go record slideshow, start recording from the beginning, and start recording. Hello, welcome to my presentation on time management. This presentation is provided by Lincoln Lane Community College and the Learning Lab. Do you find yourself cramming for tests, running late, missing assignment deadlines, wondering where to start with your daily tasks, wishing there were more hours in a day? But you've come to the right place. We're here to help. Before we begin, you can use the link below to print your own LLCC Learning Lab planning schedule as shown to the right. This will help you as we go through this presentation. First, locate your LLCC class schedule and look for the following. I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording here. Um, you kind of get the idea. I am narrating my voice over each slide, talking about the information. And when I'm ready to go to the next slide, I simply hit the right arrow. Let's assume I've gone through the entire presentation and I'm ready to stop. To stop recording, I simply click the X. And I want you to notice a few things on your presentation. You'll notice a small speaker icon now appears on your slide, indicating that you've recorded your voice or added some kind of audio to this slide. If I'd like to preview this, I can click the icon and a play bar appears. Hello, welcome to my presentation on time management. This presentation is provided by Lincoln Lane Community College and the Learning Lab. You'll notice that the audio is synced up exactly with the slide like it did when I recorded it earlier. Do you find yourself cramming for tests, running late, missing assignment? Something to be aware of, if you would like to restart and clear off the audio, there is an easy way to do that. If you go back up to slideshow and go to clear, you have the option of clearing your timings on all slides, but you also have the option of clearing all your narration. So if I click clear narration on the slide, my icon should disappear. I'm now free to start with a fresh slate and re-record. Okay, we finished narrating our voice over each slide individually based on the information. Now let's see how our finished project looks. We can play this as a regular PowerPoint, so if I go to play slideshow from the beginning, it's going to appear this way to your end users. Hello, welcome to my presentation on time management. This presentation is provided by Lincoln Lane Community College at the Learning Lab. Do you find yourself cramming for tests? Okay, I well, won't replay the whole thing for you again, but you do notice that every uh, slide has the voice synced up to it just as we did during the recording. Another option many people like is the ability to save this as a movie and then share that out on YouTube or play it on your computer or you can bring this into another application like Windows Movie Maker and do some further editing. So if I want to save this as a movie, I've got a couple of options. I can go to File, Save As, and I'll put this on my computer. On my desktop, call it Time Management Final, and I'm going to choose MPEG4 video if I want to save this later on to YouTube, or if I want to take this into Windows Movie Maker, I will choose Windows Media File. So we'll choose MPEG4 video and save. It doesn't appear like much is happening, but if you'll notice down at the bottom there is a progress bar showing the progress of the video as it is being rendered. When this is all finished, it should appear as a movie file that will be played in your default movie player on your computer when it's all done. You would not need PowerPoint to view this when the movie file is rendered. And here is our final video called Time Management Final. Let's play this and see how it sounds. Hello, welcome to my presentation on time management. Do you find yourself cramming for tests, running late, missing assignment, assignment deadlines? So you'll notice my voice is included with each slide. The information, the information is synced up with my voice as I recorded it, and it does advance automatically. So you have your own freestanding movie that you can now upload to YouTube, or play on your computer, or bring into another application for further editing. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let us know if you have any additional questions. I hope all of you peers have already tried this out and learned the technique. Now it very much depends on the versions of the PowerPoint. It's just another piece which I've included for you.
under the Mudamet environment. I've given you four pieces in a step-by-step -step manner. So I hope that you will study them before the end of this week uh, together with your learning partner because by October 14, when your second assignment is done, you need to submit something like this. All right? You need to submit something like this together with your learning partner. And then you might very much want to use your journal produced at the very beginning and the two journals combined together and then the two voices can be there as the presenter. Okay? So it's very important that you start exploring this technique with your learning partner. Okay, allow me to take attendance and then I will let you go. Alright? Day number 10, CIS 8113, section 6. Week number 5, day number 10. Brenna, thank you. Joe Chen, thank you. Christine Chen, Christine, thank you. Sammy Cho, thank you. Vienna Chen, thank you. Stephanie Chen, thank you. Winnie Chen, thank you. Karen Chong, thank you. Grace Chong, thank you. Wai Yin, Wai Yin, okay, thank you. Muffin Choi, thank you. Chu, thank you. Sunny Ku, thank you. Wei Xian, Wei Xian, Wei Xian, Du Wei Xian. Okay, see you next time. Wendy Fan, thank you. Ariel Fu, thank you. Dong Fu, thank you. Sophia Fu, thank you. Ginny Fu, thank you. Harry Ho, thank you. Pat Ho, thank you. Winnie Hui, Winnie, thank you. Joy Kwon, Joy, thank you. Wang Si Pi, thank you. Joanna David, Joanna is not here today? Okay. Joanna here? No, okay. Jocelyn Kwan, thank you. Doris Koch, thank you. Jody No, Jody, thank you. Ken Law, Ken, Ken Law, Ken, next time. Dora Clay, Dora, thank you. Kelvin Lay, thank you. Gin Yun, thank you. White Ting. Thank you. Bowie Lee, Bowie, thank you. Yen Hai, thank you. Neil Lee, thank you. William Lee, thank you. Sally Liu, thank you. Fai New, thank you. Fei New, thank you. Neil Chiang, Neil Chu Chiang. Thank you. Gao Ling. Thank you. Maggie T. Maggie, thank you. Cronia Martins. Thank you. Haley Un. Haley. Haley, are you here? Haley. Okay, see you next time. Quinn Tian. Quinn Tian. Thank you. Sorry. Justin C. Thank you. So, thank you. Kiki, Kiki, thank you. Ella, thank you. All right, next page. Tanya, thank you. Vivian Do, thank you. Ji Ting, Ji Ting, thank you. Bunny Wong, thank you. Jerry Wong. Jerry, thank you. Gong Ho, thank you. Mandy Wong, thank you. Jason Su, thank you. 
Cindy. Cindy, thank you. Kalim, thank you. Wei Min, thank you. April, thank you. Cynthia, thank you. You take, you take. Are you here? Okay, thank you. See ya. Thank you. Stephen. Thank you. Okay, that should be all the students here. Okay, now you still have about, about eight minutes time, so if you have questions, you can come to me. I can help answer your questions. If you don't have any questions, I'm looking forward to receiving your submissions here. Remember, the submission link is here, just above week number five, okay? The first link here, click here on Saturday, and you can upload your journal. Make sure you save the journal as Microsoft Word document, with the front page as provided in the template, and two more pages, all right? If you don't have any questions, see you next Monday, and have a wonderful weekend. All right, thank you.